Welcome to this presentation on finding the axis of symmetry by using the formula. The formula we're talking about here is x is equal to negative b over 2a. In order to use this formula, we need the standard form of a uh, quadratic function, which is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. If you, if you don't remember what the axis of symmetry is, that's we got a parabola, right? Well, that's not a good picture at all, is it? We got a parabola. Our axis of symmetry is the line that goes through the vertex. So that's your axis of symmetry. And that's the right here. That's the parabola. Okay, so we want to take our so basically, uh, you know, it's a pretty simple formula. You're going to take your b value, and then you're going to divide it, and that, that's a b here, not a 6. Sometimes students tell me my b's look like 6's, and that's a b too. So you're going to take b divided by 2a, and whatever you get, you're going to take the opposite sign. And when you see a negative sign out front of something like this, that means, you know, to work the problem. And then when you get through, take the opposite sign because, uh, because in essence, we're dividing by or we're multiplying by a negative 1. So once again, we got negative b over 2a. So let's look at an example. Let's say, what if we have 2x squared plus 4x plus 5? And, you're set, and the question is, what's your axis of symmetry? You know, remember your axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line that goes through the vertex. So we need something that looks like x is equal to some number, right? So we're going to take our formula, which is negative b over 2a. And if you want, you can put it in parentheses, right? b, which is negative 1 times b over 2a. Just a couple of different ways you can write your formula. But we're going to take b, which is 4, and we're going to take 2 times 2, because my a is 2, right? a is equal to 2, b is equal to 4. So we got 4 divided by 4, which is 1. And now our axis of symmetry is going to be a negative 1 because of this right here. Let's see. I did my operations, and then at the end, notice I took the opposite sign. You could carry that through if you wanted. For example, we could have done negative b over 2a, and we had 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. That was our equation, right? So you could have done a negative 4 times 2 times 2, which would give us negative 4 over 4, which is negative one. Either way, uh, I just like to think of this as taking the opposite sign, right? And let's look at another example. What if we had something like x squared plus 3x plus 4? What's our, what's our axis of symmetry? What's our vertical line that cuts this parabola in half? Well, take your formula. Negative b over 2a a is 1, b is 3, c is 4, but we don't, we're not too concerned about the 4. There's an understood 1 here. I see students write a 1 there. That's perfectly okay. I would write that 1 there just so I know that my a is a 1 because I've seen people plug in 0 and get crazy answers. So we're going to take our 3, do 2 times 1, which is 3 halves. And we're going to take that opposite of that because our formula has that negative sign. So our so our um, axis of symmetry is negative 3 halves. If you're in my class, leave it as negative 3 halves. Some teachers like negative 1.5. One more example. You got negative 3x squared plus 10x plus 9. We... Yeah, I wrote that one down right. So you got negative 3x squared plus 10x plus 9. Well, 
you're going to do your negative b over 2a. That's equal to x. You know, x is our, going to be our axis of symmetry. It's that vertical line that's going to cut this parabola in half. So a is negative 3. B is 10. I'm not even going to worry about my C because it's nowhere in here. It's not doing anything we don't have to. So you got your negative 10 times 2 times negative 3, which would be negative 10 over negative 6, which reduces down to negative or positive 5 thirds, right? Or if you did it, you could have done. Remember, it's negative b over 2a, which is the same thing as putting it in parentheses, putting it your negative sign out front. So my b was 10. My times 2a, my a is negative 3. So I've got 10 over negative 6. That reduces down to negative 5 thirds. Uh, and, uh, so that's my b over 2a. This negative sign tells me to take the opposite, so I still got 5 thirds. So either way, you, you get the right answer. Just that's really kind of a whether you ignore this in the beginning and take your opposite sign at the end, or whether you carry it all the way through the problem. That's just a matter of preference. Uh, Either way, you're always going to get this, the same answer, and that's how you find the axis of symmetry by using our formula negative b over 2a is equal to x. Have fun with them.